Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Mitchell Renz ready to get into the news and rumors of today's show. But before I do, Valentine's Day, y'all. It's literally less than a week away, and I don't want you to be unprepared. I don't want your manhood not smelling as great as what it possibly could. So go to manscaped.com, use code Raiders for 20% off, and you get free shipping, and that's a pretty damn good deal if you ask me. So coming up here on today's show, we're going to be talking about the latest coaching rumors. There were some new reports that came out today, but if you watch the Raiders report on Friday, you'll know some of the stuff that I'm about to bring up. Rich Basaccia, he is now officially no longer a member of the Las Vegas Raiders. We got a crazy Russell Wilson trade idea from ESPN beat reporter. Repiter, reporter Paul Gutierrez and then at the end of today's show another Derek Carr trade idea from ESPN. Now obviously my job here as a host is to keep you guys up to date on news, on rumors and there's going to be a lot of stuff that happens in the off season. I think honestly over the past three days you see me make some videos from home. I'll continue to any chance I get to make videos in studio I'll make sure that we do that but at the end of the day do not want you to miss anything so subscribe and turn on those notifications. I told you all weeks ago the offseason is the most important time of the year to make sure those notifications are turned on. So let's start here with the top story of today's show. Last week, I said that the Raiders were interested in Joe Judge, former head coach of the New York Giants, to be their special teams coordinator. Today, Jeremy Fowler has officially reported that the Raiders are, in fact, interested in Judge. Now, Judge at this current juncture is trying to stay patient. He wants to weigh all of his options because there are multiple teams that have expressed interest in Judge. And I would honestly say I get the fact that Judge was not a very good head coach, but he's probably the top special teams coordinator out there as it stands right now. For those of you that maybe followed the Giants' uh, season the past two years, Judge is just one of these guys who, great, great coordinator, but was a very bad leader of men, very bad head coach, and couldn't really coordinate the offense. Fired after two seasons, and if the Raiders were able to go out and get Judge, this would be an absolute awesome, awesome hire by this team. Now, Judge has had some experience in the past with the New England Patriots, so there's where that Josh McDaniels connection comes in. But about a week ago, shout out to the song, can't remember it, when the Raiders uh, hired McDaniels, I said, do not be shocked if they go out and get Joe Judge as the special teams coordinator. So you guys be the judge. But uh, type Y for yes or N for no. Should the Raiders go out and hire Joe Judge to be their special teams coordinator? Y for yes or you could type N for no. If you don't want the Raiders to go out and get Judge, here are four other names. I try to do my best to talk to some people that I trust, do some digging of homework, and here were the top five candidates to be the next Raiders special teams coordinator. You got Tracy Smith, assistant special teams coach over there in Seattle. Phil Galeano, I believe it's, or wait, Gail Leano, excuse me, assistant special teams coach in New Orleans. Braden Combs, I know a lot of people, like, they see the Detroit Lions, and they're like, wait, wait a minute. He's got actually some connections there with McDaniels. Joe Judge and then Joe Houston, assistant special teams coordinator of the New England Patriots. With Valentine's Day being less than a week away, all I want you to do is look down below, and if it doesn't look like it's an A-plus grade, then you need to go to manscaped.com, use code Raiders, 20% off, and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. The two products that I am absolutely in love with right now, the Lawnmower 4.0, which you see right over here, you're not going to get razor burn. It's also going to help you with some ingrown hairs. It's You can use it in the shower, longer battery life. It doesn't vibrate in your hand, so it's not like a weird overall shave. It's honestly going to be one of the best shaves you've ever had on your downstairs. And then on top of that, the new body wash. Manscaped just released new body wash. I've used the ball toner. I've used the ball deodorant before, and I get it. It might be cold in your air. You're like, oh, I don't sweat down there. <laughs> Breaking news, you're still sweating down near your Nathan Peterman, which I guess I can't say anymore because he's not on the team. Down near your Ken Stabler. Yeah, you're just, there's all sorts of smells going on. So use code Raiders, manscaped.com, because the last thing I want is to see you on the free agent market, or who knows, maybe your girlfriend even try to trade you away like you're about to see in an upcoming video. Now the next story coming around here is going to be around Papa Basaccia and this is now official. I told you all a few weeks ago that Rich wasn't going to be coming back to the Raiders. And, you know, you always have the people down in the comments, well, what if this is this? Well, what if this is this? Well, here it is. Rich Basaccia has officially accepted a job 
with the Green Bay Packers to be their next special teams coordinator. And when you talk about some of the units in terms of special teams, Green Bay was the worst special teams unit in all of football last year. And I actually don't even know if it's all that close. I have nothing but love, nothing but respect for Basaccia. And I tried to go and see if the Raiders were playing uh, the Packers this year. No, but it looks like the Raiders will be playing the Packers in 2023. And that's a home game. So Basaccia potentially coming to Las Vegas in 2023. He's going to get a standing ovation. So all I want you guys to do is this. Just show some love to uh, Papa Basaccia so you can type thanks. Or Jeremy wanted you guys to type Papa Sachia. So him and I have a little bit of a bet going on. I'm not going to tell you what is exactly going to happen. But either you can type thanks or you can type Papa Basaccia. Either one, I want you to show some love to Rich, who's done a lot of good things for these Raiders players and for the Raiders organization. Coming up now, we're going to get into some Derek Carr trade rumors because with the offseason, you're going to have a lot of people that like to throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. So don't even get me wrong. I've done it at times too. But now my job is to obviously keep you guys up to date on the news and rumors. And then if I see some ideas out there, or some trades or free agency moves, my job is then to go ahead and give you my two cents. Now, in terms of some of the more respected people online, or at least on Twitter, I know a lot of people think Paul Gutierrez is a very well-respected guy. I get the fact that he works at ESPN, but overall knowledge of the Raiders, I definitely think in his realm is definitely lacking. Here was the trade whole article that ESPN released in. Paul basically spoke for the Raiders in this scenario. So ESPN essentially did simulating starting quarterback changes. They break down all these things that could potentially happen. Gutierrez had the Raiders trading for Russell Wilson. Gutierrez went ahead to say that he thought that both quarterbacks could benefit from a change of scenery. In terms of Russell Wilson, he's made it pretty obvious that he no longer wants to be on the Seattle Seahawks and wants to go to a contender. Derek Carr, he also obviously wants to play for a contender, and everything that I've read indicates that the Raiders have no plans whatsoever of trading D.C. But here we go. Let's look at this. This is Paul Gutierrez's trade idea, and what I want you guys to do is take a screenshot of this, post it on Twitter, Post it on Instagram. If you want to go ahead and tag me, please go ahead and do so. But Gutierrez's idea was the Raiders receive Russell Wilson and a 2022 fifth round pick. The Seattle Seahawks get Derek Carr, Jonathan Abram, and then a 2022 second round pick. So who wins this trade? If you believe the Las Vegas Raiders win this trade, I want you to go down to the YouTube comments and spam Raiders. If you believe that the Seattle Seahawks win this deal, I want you to go ahead and type Seahawks. The team that I think won this trade is the Las Vegas Raiders and honestly y'all I don't even think it's close when we do a lot of trades here at chat sports we try to talk amongst the group amongst a bunch of people to just get everyone's idea that way it's not nothing's just one side heavy we all collectively said this was an absolutely idiotic move by Paul Gutierrez I mean I, I know Paul does some good stuff but it's just a bad trade idea from top to bottom like the Seattle Seahawks are never going to trade away Russell Wilson unless they get a first-round pick back. Why? They don't have a first-round pick this year. On top of that, the overall value between Carr and Russell, I know Russ is coming off a down year, but Russ's value is just still very much more high than Derek Carr. Carr's 30 years old. Wilson's about to be 34. Then you got Jonathan Abram. They already have Jamal Adams, and Abram is like the walmart version of jamal adams if we're being 100 percent honest and the fact that you're getting a fifth for a second it's really not that big of a deal now if the raiders let's say do end up making this trade you would get or you would owe russell wilson 51 million dollars over the next two years so basically 25.5 million the other reason why seattle would never do that trade is because the amount of money they would still have to pay wilson so you better get a first round pick so honestly i think what it did was espn asked paul to give his opinion Goodyear didn't do enough research now it was my job to go ahead and kind of clean it up because you have to realize that trade that Gutierrez put together was not realistic whatsoever now to make sure you guys stay up to date on news rumors and actual good Raiders content make sure you hit me up on Twitter make sure you hit me up on Instagram at Mitchell 365 over the weekend I did an IG live got to speak to some awesome Raider fans and at the end of the day if I can chop it up with y'all talk some Raiders content that's what this show here is all about could the Las Vegas Raiders trade away Derek Carr? ESPN released an article simulating starting quarterback changes. Paul Gutierrez, who was doing a lot of the writing here for the Raiders' side, 
thought that trading card could actually happen. Now, his whole idea was that you still cannot trust Josh McDaniels. I get it. The Raiders don't plan on trading Carr, or at least from what I've heard, they don't want to trade Carr. However, until you can sit down and say that Carr is going to be the starting quarterback in week one, Josh McDaniels from his previous track record cannot be trusted. Here's what Gutierrez had to say on the whole idea of trading away Derek Carr. While Raiders owner Mark Davis said Las Vegas was not in a rebuild or a reload after hiring new head coach Josh McDaniels, it is a fresh start. And if the Raiders could get an immediate first rounder for Carr, who is in need of an extension, as well as a potential third rounder next year to quicken said fresh start, what's the debate? Well, Paul, honestly, man, uh, here's the debate. If you can't get at least two first-round picks for Derek Carr, I'm not really 100% interested in it. From what I've gathered from what Gutierrez just said from there, he said that he would trade uh, Carr for a first since he's due an extension. If you think Derek Carr is worth only one first-round pick, uh, I personally think that you're absolutely insane because from anything that I've shown, if a guy like Matthew Stafford's going for basically two firsts, if a guy, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a more recent trade, was uh, Car Carson Wentz, a first and a third, Car's better than Carson Wentz. It's like, Gutierrez, you just got to do a little bit more homework, my man. So here was the trade idea that Paul decided to throw together. Raiders receive a 2022 first, which is the 11th overall pick, and then a conditional fourth rounder, which you're hoping can turn into a third round pick in 2023. The Washington Commanders get Derek Carr. What I don't understand here is how you're only going to give a first and then a conditional fourth, but yet literally a trade earlier in the article you're throwing around Derek Carr and Russell Wilson. It's just a very contradicting article. So who wins this deal? If you think the Raiders win this deal, go ahead and type LV. If you believe the Washington football team win this deal, I want you to go ahead and type WAS. Washington wins this deal, and I don't want the Raiders to trade Derek Carr. I don't think the Raiders are going to trade Derek Carr. But for you to only get a first-round pick and then a conditional third in the next year's draft for your quarterback coming off a season where you won 10 games and you have a brand-new head coach, if Josh McDaniels were to do that trade, I would definitely question his ability to make the right decisions. Now, don't get me wrong. If I could trade D.C., I would do it. But the only way that McDaniels is going to end up doing that is if Carr's asking for just a ridiculous, and I mean ridiculous, contract extension. And McDaniels is like, all right, man, I don't want to deal with that anymore. Now, I saw the Washington Commanders, and I get it. It still seems weird to say it out loud. But if D.C. were to be traded, again, I do not see it happening. If D.C. were to be traded, here are the top five teams in terms that I think would be the most interested. At number one, it's the Green Bay Packers. Why? Brand new special teams coach Rich Basachi has the connection. And Carr and Devontae Adams, they do want to play together. Packers, clear favorites. The Commanders would come in at number two. Steelers without Big Ben. The Saints potentially because they need to save some money and need a quarterback. And at number five, there's been a lot of rumblings that Indy could move on from Carson Wentz and I'm wondering, with new defensive coordinator Gus Bradley, could he smoothen the deal? Here are my top five car destinations, though I do not see him getting dealt this season.